Okay, the head of Instagram, Adam Mosari, is facing backlash for comments he made on the Recode Media podcast, an excellent podcast with Pierre Kafka. I've been on it once or twice. He basically compares social media and the dangers of it to the car industry. Let's listen to a 70 second clip and I'll give you my feedback after. As head of Instagram, do you feel like the product should not be available to certain kinds of people? I mean, if, if this is something that, gen that genuinely could make, and you don't know yet, right? You're, that's you're saying we don't, we don't, we're not fully confident in the research. But if there's a chance that this is a product that could really harm people in the same way that you know, cigarettes could harm people, that you guys should be restricting it or maybe taking it off the market. Absolutely not. I, and I really don't agree with the comparison to drugs or cigarettes, which have very limited, if any, upsides. I think that Anything that is going to be used at scale is going to have positive and negative outcomes. Cars have positive and negative outcomes. We understand that. We know that more people die than would otherwise because of car accidents. But by and large, it cre cars create way more value in the world than they destroy. And I think social media is similar. I think that we do a ton to help people connect with those that they love. We've helped advance a number of important social causes particularly Me Too and Black Lives Matter. We help small businesses make a living. We help creators find ways to express themselves. There's a bunch of them. We give voice to those who have been historically marginalized. There's a ton of value that we create. And But yes, of course, there are also issues as well. All right, they have it, folks. So, you know, that quote, in case you missed it, we know that more people die than would otherwise because of car accidents. But by and large, cars create way more value in the world than they destroy. And I think social media is similar. I mean, it's fine. I think using analogies is how we figure out how new things impact us. A couple of things to think about with cars. Um, cars go through a lot of regulatory uh, testing and have massive amounts of regulation. In the beginning, they had none because they were new. And then they went through massive, massive regulation. And there was many actions taken against the car industry because they knew that airbags and seatbelts and three-point harnesses would have absolutely saved more lives and they kind of took their time in adding those because they added a lot of cost to the car and a lot being you know uh, hundreds of dollars uh, and it would have saved millions of lives or probably hundreds of thousands of lives over the years since thirty thousand people a year i believe is the number die in car accidents and there is a minimum age for driving and people take um uh, driving lessons and they get a driver's license so if mosari is a fan of this great uh great metaphor how about kids have to take a course, pass a test, uh, and they get a social media license if they want to use social media before the age of 18 or 17 or whatever it is. If we know that, um, you know, and it's proven that this causes, uh, you know, anxiety, depression, etc. in one third of uh, teen girls, well, then maybe they should take a course before they get on it. <laughs> that seems completely reasonable to me. It seems like the social media, the downside to social media might be actually more than the downside to driving. So great analogy, Masari. Yeah, let's regulate uh, social media for kids exactly the same way cars are, which is don't let them use it, right? Kids are not allowed to use social media until they hit the age of 16. And there are situations they're allowed to use it in. They're sometimes not allowed to go on the highway, right? You get a learner's permit, you're allowed to use it. But during the daylight, you have to have a, a driver with you. I like that analogy as well. What if to use social media, your parent had to be, you know, uh, or your guardian had to be on the side right next to you. In other words, they had access to the account they saw what you posted, maybe they approve what you post, they could easily build that into Instagram. How about a tool where with Instagram, you add who your parent or guardian is, I'm sorry, and that person then sees all of your interactions, everything you posted and everybody you followed. And they would give you the ability to approve like I do on my iPhone, I will approve the apps my daughters want to add, they request it, the parental controls I edit. So let's put parental controls on Instagram, where if somebody wants to post, and they're an underage person, they're, you know, I guess 13 is the starting age, but let's say anybody who's, you know, a teenager, not 18 yet, their parents have to approve their post before they post it. Easy to do, right? Uh, so I think uh, metaphors are helpful. And I, I actually kind of like this one. Um, why not highly regulate uh, social media for kids? It makes total sense. US News published an article in February about the impact of social media on teen girls mental health. Here's a quote from that article. We found that girls who started using social media at two to three hours a day or more at age 13, and then increased that use over time had the highest levels of suicide risk in emerging adulthood. Said the study author, Sarah Coyne, she is an associate director of the School of Family Life at Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. 
Suicide rates of 100,000 people in America have risen steadily uh, since social media took off in the late 2000s. Uh, so if you look, we would have 11. Um, if you look at this chart, suicide rates, you know, uh, 10.8, 11, 10.9, up until 2006. And from 2006, uh, we had straight up growth in the number of suicides uh, in the United States. That correlates exactly when Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram all became super popular. Is that the correlation? Is it opioids? Is it something else? Who knows? But it's definitely something that is so obvious to anybody who's a parent or anybody who's used social media, that social media is not something children should use. It's obvious to every parent. Parents give into it. I understand it's really hard if the other kids in the class have phones, they have TikTok, it's hard to police. You don't have unlimited time. We've all got to work and have other obligations as parents. But this is where Musari needs to take more ownership. Uh, and I would, the idea is here, they were covering up this information about, uh, you know, these results at the same time uh, that they were proposing Instagram for kids. So this is absolutely crazy. Um, I don't know if I like the cigarette analogy um, as much as I like the car analogy. So uh, another quick update uh, on this Facebook fallout after the Wall Street Journal article published on Tuesday, the following happened. Three Democrats from both houses of Congress sent a letter to Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg asking for answers like, quote, please provide copies of all external research Facebook has commissioned or otherwise accessed regarding the mental health of your children and teen users. Uh, here's another quote, please provide copies of all internal research Facebook has conducted regarding the mental health of your children and teen users. And third, and finally, a quote, will Facebook agree to abandon its plans to launch any new platforms for children or teens, including versions of Instagram for children? If not, why not? So you're going to see a lot more uh, legal investigations. And I think Facebook, uh, you know, we should, our expectation is Facebook cares more about growth and revenue than they do our children. You should not trust Facebook with your information and you should not trust them with your children. Uh, and certainly you should not trust the Chinese Communist Party uh, and let your kids use TikTok. My best advice to you as a parent, and I'm not saying this in a preachy way, is no social media till 16 or 17. That's going to be our plan in our household. And I understand not everybody has the resources I have, or maybe there's a, you're a single parent and you don't have the time to monitor everything. There are apps now that will let you monitor, like RPAC, I think is one, where you can put this on your kid's phone or iPad and you can watch their usage see what URLs they open, uh, see what instant messages and, and what they do, how much time they spend in each app, and in fact, to block them from certain apps. Um, and of course, none of this is perfect. And I respect your right to choose as a parent what you think is the best. But my Lord, um, do some research on this because and if you know anybody who lets unbridled access to their kids, I think parents need to sort of team up on this. Because if you have three or four kids in a group who are allowed to use TikTok and four or five who are not, we all know what's going to happen. They're all going to share the TikTok and you know, probably something they could handle at 16, 17, 18 years old, something like that. But I think we all know at 10, 11, 12, 13, it's probably not something they should be doing. So it takes a village. Zendesk is the go-to tool for customer support. We all know that. They also offer a suite of tools designed to remove the difficulties of sales software. So get Zendesk suite of sales tools plus their industry leading support software for free for six months as part of Zendesk for startups. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But I want you to know that you'll also get access to Zendesk's community of startup founders and partners and will even offer dedicated onboarding guidance and support. You know, Steezy Studios, it's one of our portfolio companies and they sell software to learn how to dance. Hundreds of thousands of people are using that software and they want to make sure everybody has a great experience with the software, obviously. So through a combination of Zendesk Explorer and their ticket tagging system, Steezy is able to track which features their users are most excited about and then relay that to the product team. So they're using customer support to make the product better. So for Steezy, Zendesk creates a positive relationship with their members and empowers them to contribute to Steezy's growth in return for some awesome dance moves. Get six months of Zendesk for startups free at zendesk.com slash twist. To qualify, you must have under 50 employees. That's reasonable. And you must have raised a Series A or below and be a new Zendesk customer. A couple of conditions there because they're giving you something really valuable for free. Six months of Zendesk for startups. Start building the best customer experiences at zendesk.com slash twist.